Hey guys, welcome back to Cause 3D. I'm Kyle, and today we're going to work on sanding the dome. Raw print, we're going to get it sanded nice and smooth. I'm going to show you my process, so let's get to it. Okay, so to start off, I've filmed these videos a little bit out of order, but I decided I wanted to do a single print dome this time. The last dome that I did in the last video of the painting was a multi-sliced dome that I had to glue together, and I didn't show any of that process. I just showed the finishing, uh, final sanding, wet sanding, and painting of the dome and a couple different painting techniques. But this time, I wanna go back and restart a new dome um, just because why not, you know? So I'm gonna walk you through the process. This is straight off the print bed and uh, the print turned out fantastic. I've got a little bit of stringing, but nothing, nothing major at all. So uh, to start with, when you get your dome off the bed, there are these extra uh, supports that are built into the dome. I am not removing those during the sanding process. Those will come off later on down the line. And I uh, just wanna get going on this just with the sanding to start. Straight off the print bed, now we're gonna start sanding. I prefer to use a random orbit sander. I'm starting with an 80 grit. Uh, I will won't caution you on an 80 grit. You do have to be very careful not to stay in one spot too long and, and you know start melting the plastic and warping the plastic. So I just wanna get going on this, demonstrate what's going on. I've got my circulation system on, so I don't have a breath mask on, but I'm gonna put it on in a minute. But I just wanna give you a start on how we do this. So 80 grit. Here we go, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I'm not bearing down with this. I am being very light with the 80 grit. I just want to scratch it. That's kind of the idea of, you know, we're not trying to remove print lines yet. We're just scratching off the high spots. So it's very important when you're working with 80 grit is the longer you stay on a piece, the more it's gonna melt the section. And yeah, you're gonna get some results, but then there's a fine line to where it goes. Now, nah, well, I'm gonna start separating some shells in there and I'm gonna start filleting back some uh, melted plastic. So you wanna be careful not to do that. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this dome with the 80 grit and then we'll move, move over to the next step. All right, so we got the 80 grit done. Uh, like I said before, it's just a rough sanding. I mean, there's still print lines in it, not trying to get them all out yet. And uh, you don't wanna rush the process with the 80 grit. I did go back with some 80 grit on uh, hand sanding and did these uh, spines right here because I didn't wanna you know, get them rounded off or anything by accident. And then uh, same as with the top, just you know, hit it with the hand paper. Uh, this ring on the single print dome is recessed just a hair. Uh, it's a little difficult to get into. I stay away from that for now just because I don't want to dig into this area on the uh, lower ring. So the upper ring is, is more delicate to get into. I, again, I go back with uh, 80 grit on my um, hand sanding and just hit that out. And it does take a lot longer just in those areas on that ring than it does on pretty much any other part if you're using an electric sander. So now I'm gonna finish that ring with hand sanding and then I'm gonna move over to a 240 grit on my random orbit sander and we'll get to that next. All right, I think I said 240 earlier. I actually use a 220 in this, in this process. Um, so I'm going to change my sanding disc over here and I'm gonna get it started in here in the shop so you can see what I do. And then I'm gonna move outside. It's such a beautiful day outside today and uh, that way I don't have the melted plastic fumes floating around the shop. So let's get, let's get started on this part. Now that I've hit the full dome with the 220, I am going to move over to a, I've got a sanding sponge here that I like to use. A uh, flexible sponge, helps you with a little bit of contour, but also keeps it a flat surface to sand with. 
I'm gonna move over to a 320 grit. Now, the only thing I'm doing with the 320, I'm not trying to sand out any more print lines. What I'm trying to do is if you have any dust, balled up plastic, any areas that, you know, if you run your hand over, you can still feel some residue from the sanding. So what I'm gonna do is just go off, knock all that stuff down real quick. Now we've got it sanded down and uh, I'm going to take it over to the air compressor <clears throat> and I'm going to blow off as much dust as I can, followed up with a probably a paper towel, wipe it all down, blow it off again. If you want to use a tack cloth, that works as well to remove all your dust because uh, we want to get all as much, <clears throat> much dust out of this, off this dome as we can at this point because the next step we're gonna move over to is putting some Bondo glazing down on it. And it's a very simple, quick, easy process. And then we'll move on to more sanding. So stay tuned. Let's talk about the Bondo glazing and spot putty. Uh, this stuff is wonderful for filling in small print lines. This is not meant to build up parts if you've got a, uh, I mean, if you've got to build something up, this is not the best product for it, but this stuff is wonderful for just filling in your simple print lines as long as you have small areas. Now, on the top here, I mean, it's, it's got some pretty good print lines when it was doing this section of the dome. I'm not sanding those all completely out. I don't want to, um, don't need to, but we're gonna have to be a little thicker, a little more liberal here on the top. A couple of these uh, parts here on the, what I call the spines, they're also going to need to be a little thicker. So with for that, I recommend, since it does have to be thicker, I'm just going to put on a latex glove and we are going to somewhat haphazardly just spread this on here, being very careful not to get it into any of the lower parts here or inside this this ring and I'm going to show you what happens if we do make a mistake probably because I probably will get some in there and the stuff you don't you don't have a like a crazy amount of work time with it but you don't have to hurry just put a little bit on at a time take your time work it around and this first pass is not to get all the print lines out yet this first pass is just to get a nice base on there that we're gonna sand off and then put another coat on. Because building up the coats and sanding it back down actually is time consuming, but you'll get better results out of it instead of just globbing it on in one big giant thick pass that you then have to turn around and sand back down. Keeping this as smooth as we can As it starts to cure and dry, you'll notice that you can kind of push it around a little bit with your finger. So if you do get some on the interior, like I just did, I usually have either a, you can take a chisel or a, a, I've got an ice pick here and I just run it around the edge. Now, if you get a lot in there, you're going to want to get your ice pick cleaned as you go, but we want to keep it out of those areas inside here so that our center uh, top dome top fits in there. So let's go ahead and finish the sides here. Again, we're just pushing this into as best we can into any of those cracks and lines that are left from where we got done, didn't get out sanding. If you have a multi-print dome, a multi-piece that you have to print your dome in, you're gonna have a lot of seam lines up here. And if you have seam lines, I usually go back with a soldering tool and I actually run down those seam lines so that it it concaves it just a little bit so that I can then fill in 
a little easier as opposed to having two pieces that are stepped up you've now got a channel that you can actually get this stuff into you have to be very careful with the soldering iron do it in a well ventilated area like any of this stuff obviously all of this process we're using bondo it is not good to sit here and breathe i've got a fan going over in the corner that's pushing it that way i've got a circulation system that's catching it over there and recirculating in clean air into my shop if you don't have that all you need to do is grab a respirator that's rated for this type of project all right now that we got that done we've got a different two different processes that we can use <clears throat> at least on the larger sides the larger area of the dome and um Let's save this glove because it is not done yet. Good thing about this Bondo is you can just crackle it off after it dries and reuse the glove a couple more times. So two processes. Um, I don't normally do this stuff on my workbench, so it's a little higher than I, I have a lower workbench for this type of stuff. But I'm going to try to demonstrate what you can do. Now you want to be careful not to make a mess with this and get it into areas that you don't want it in. So we're just going to put a small line and I've got a, uh, a wedge here that I'm going to use and I'm just going to very carefully drag it. Now I am not going to get it up next to this top area and I don't want it in any of the, the holes down here. I'm just trying to get the largest area of the, of the dome and I've got a little bit of a curve to it when I'm doing it. And you just want to keep adding more material down as you work it around. And this is one of your smoothest ways that you can get your dome covered. Obviously, you're going to have to go back and sand it again. So I don't kill myself with trying to, you know, if I have a couple little drips, lines, whatever, I don't try to go fix them right away. That's one process that you can use. You can always go back and touch up these other spots with either a, I actually I use either a credit card, an old credit card, don't use your good credit card, or a, uh, another one of these applicators for Bondo. But I've got a lot less sanding to do with this now because I've hit some big areas and I have a good coat on there. And you're always going to find problems later when you go back to it and trouble spots and so forth. But now, we've got a very even coat here. So I just over went over this edge. I've got a little bit of a drip there. I'm not touching that. I'm going to let that dry. It'll pop off because it didn't get in there and uh, bond like we're doing with the spreading it around. All right clean off my tool here and now I want to demonstrate the second method that you can use and this one is uh, a little bit more I'm gonna say hazardous to your breathing but <clears throat> again well ventilated area so what we're gonna do is we've got some acetone and we're gonna put our Bondo into a container don't use a plastic container because acetone will eat through that this poor metal container that i have it's been around the block a few times we're going to add some acetone in there not a lot we just want to thin the bondo and i want it i want it kind of the consistency i used to say milk but milk's not thick enough if you make it too thin, that is okay. You can just let it sit for a little bit and the acetone will actually evaporate out of it. So what's the mixture ratio? I don't know, but I don't want this. This is, this is way too thin. I got a little crazy with it there. So I'm gonna let this sit for just a few minutes until it's less runny and then we're gonna brush it on. And that's when I'm going to hit some of these areas up here that are close to, um, you know, grooves that we do not want to get any Bondo into. 
because we don't want to have to pick it out and sand it out later and it, it's it's a mess so this is a this is one of those processes that if you take your time to do it and you get it right you'll have less problems so i'm going to let this sit for just a minute while i go ahead and finish this section and then we'll demonstrate that process Okay, so this is sat for just a few minutes, um, and it's still it's still a little thinner than I normally like to work with, but we're gonna go ahead and get this started. So if I'm going to do these areas up here at the top, what I like to do is I like to get this up, and we've still got some wet bondo on here, so I'm rushing this just a bit. I'm gonna try to rest it on this edge so we don't have to worry about it. So I push my brush. Uh, if you've ever painted anything in your life, you know if you push your brush up against the side, it will release some of the, some of the material that you're using. And I'm gonna just go this direction. I'm using an old chip brush. Uh, you don't need anything fancy in this, in this spot. Um, going back in, stir up a little bit, push it up against the side, don't want any runs. And just keep coating as we go around. Now, if you're good enough with the uh, application tool I used a moment ago, you can get right up on these edges, but, and usually I do, but I want to show you that if you have zero, zero uh, ability with spreading Bondo or anything with a tool, you can still get by with doing the basics of the center part of the dome. Again, the only reason why we do it is because it's just less sanding because it's relatively smooth compared to brushing this on. You are going to have paint brush strokes in it. So we're just going to keep working our way around here. I feel like Bob Ross. Never be as cool as him though, will I? That's all right. I wonder if he has a theme song. I need a theme song. Assume anybody watches the video, right? Yes, I am talking to you and myself because this is a long, boring process. All right, I made it all the way around. I was a little thin when I started. I'm gonna add just another strip there. Looks good. Looks good. <clears throat> all right, so now I've got a glob that's up here and you're not gonna be able to see it on camera. I'm gonna leave it. I'm not touching it, I'm not gonna clean it up because I can go back with my X-Acto knife, pop it right off there, and uh, have no problems with it later. So the, the really thin parts that the, that the blue panels sit on, I don't even have anything small enough to show you, but it's this little thin part right up in here. I don't do anything with those because it's, it's a pain to get in there. It's a pain to sand them. If you get any type of filler in there, your panels won't fit correctly. You can't see them because they're recessed far enough in. I don't worry with them. So if you uh, want to kill yourself doing that, knock yourself out, but not this guy. So on the front edges here now, I'm going to just tilt it up again. And I'm going to brush downward because if you brush up, you're going to catch the edges of these lips and it's going to deposit way too much material up inside those areas where you don't want it. So I've been working at this for less than, easily less than an hour, probably only about 40 minutes start to finish so far. So you see how fast this process can be. And yeah, I've had a little experience doing it. So if it's your first time, you're going to be a little slower but it does not take that long to do. I'm gonna have to turn my fan up a little higher because I can still smell my Bondo glazing and I don't really want that in my lungs if I can help it. If you end up having an allergy to this stuff or anything like that, make sure you wear gloves every time. Um, fortunately, I don't suffer from that and usually don't get much on me. I say that and I'll have it all over me here in a second, but you're welcome. 
didn't mean for this to be a comedy show. So if you want, jump down there in the uh, comments section. Tell me what you guys would like to see next. I kind of was thinking that I might do... Um, I might do the Lazy Susan attachment to the dome. I'm no expert on it, but I failed enough at it that maybe I can help somebody else not make the same mistakes that I've made in the past. I think this dome got bigger. Feels like I should be done already. So you will see I dab it sometimes. I kind of come in and dab if I don't want to uh, brush it. I'm kind of, I don't know how to explain. I don't really have much technique. I just do what I do here, but I'm just kind of slapping it down on the, on the surface, just trying to deposit enough in there. Yes, it's, it's uneven right now and that's okay. <clears throat> here we go. Probably can't see it on camera, but in this area here, I'm actually just going to kind of dab it in because it's finally set up thick enough. And I don't want it to go inside this area or this eye area here. But I do want to get a good coverage on it. All right, so we're almost done. Now I'm going to work down the side pieces here and... Uh, get one coat around the the bottom actually i'm going to jump ahead just a little bit and i want to show you let me grab a, another quick tool that i have so this is a tongue depressor and what i do is i keep this on hand and if i get some uh bondo glazing here in this area that i don't want it in um, you can come through, especially on this, this upper seam, and you can actually drag it back out. And I will do a quick demonstration of that. Not that I want extra work for myself, but if you're coming along here and you're not going to believe this, but I'm not even getting it dropping down in there, so that's fantastic. But if you do get it in there, you can come back with this. I've just cut it with a pair of scissors and drag that back out now that you still have a clean clean channel in there. And uh, I do wipe it off between every pole just so I don't deposit more material in there. So I'm going to get the rest of this glazed and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, and that's it. We've got our first coat down. I'm going to save what's left of my Bondo glazing, let that dry out. We're going to add some acetone to it later and uh, we can remix it. It's fine. <clears throat> Got a little bit of acetone here in my jalapeno stuffed olives jar. Uh, just gonna clean my brush off so I can reuse my brush. And be careful not to splash this stuff in your eyes. Not that I've ever done that. Don't want to either. But that burns like crazy. So, all right, brush is cleaned off enough. Let's let that dry out there. I'll add some, throw it back in here later and get it uh, soft again. So that's it, that's our first coat. Now at this point, I like to, I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna go mow the yard or something and uh, let it completely dry. I'm gonna get any of these drips and runs that I don't, where they're not supposed to be, I'll flake those out with my uh, ice pick or you know, I've got all kinds of little pointy sharp tools and a couple files if we need to, but let this fully cure. And then I'm gonna go back and inspect the dome I do see I left a, I don't want to move it because it might have some wet still touching the bench. I've got a couple of streaks, probably had an impurity in it when I was dragging it with my tool over here. I'm going to hit that again real quick. Um, inspect it all. I might do a whole nother coat, even another thin coat before I do the first sanding, but it looks pretty good so far. And next step of this after it cures we're going to sand it all down i'm going to probably use a 400 grit sandpaper but we'll see if i haven't mentioned yet um the i will put a link on where this dome is available it is on mr Badalay's, um available through his patreon on his facebook page and i have to say it, it's an amazing build group i absolutely love being a part of it and uh hopefully you learn something here and we can uh, 
you know, the rest of the community can help you in the Facebook group. But I did want to throw that out there. I will put a link in the description of how you get a hold of these files and so forth. So a uh, big shout out and thank you goes to that droid building community. So let's let this cure and then we'll start sanding. Everyone's favorite thing to do. All right, so we've moved outside here because I don't like to sand this stuff in the shop if I can help it. And uh, going back to my 320 grit sandpaper and my sanding block. And we're just gonna start sanding down what we've put on with the glazing so far. And hopefully we've got a pretty good uh, surface when we're done here. We don't want to sand it completely off because then we're going to be fighting with more print lines again. And this isn't always a one and done coat. Uh, so there's a good chance that we'll have to put in another coat, but we'll see here. Got some lines that drip there. So we're just going to go around the dome and uh, sand out all of our... Bondo glazing that we put on and do our best to get our marks out of it from our paintbrush and so on. Now one thing I will do here in a minute is grab my air compressor, blow some air on this and make sure that we get all the dust off so that we can really see how good of a job we've done as we're going and focus on some trouble spots in those areas. Overall, it's looking very smooth. That's the frustrating part with this stuff is when you when you get done sanding and you go back and you blow off or clean it off, you realize that you've got multiple uh, spots that you've thought were really nice that you actually have to work on quite a bit. Got some marks in there, but nothing that we can't fix really easily. All right, so I'm going to finish this up and then we'll move back inside. Well, that didn't take long. Uh, got a pretty good base here. There are some places that still need a little bit of a little bit of work. Uh, here's where I'm just cleaning out some blowout that I had when I was doing the bondo glazing. I'm just trying to get some of that broken out of there. Since we didn't wipe it, it it, uh, it stayed pretty pretty easy to remove. So that's pretty much it. I mean, now we're at the point, it's kind of rinse and repeat. I've got some places to fix. I'll probably use some, do some hand sanding, a couple very small spots to fill and so on. But uh, we're in pretty good shape. We're almost ready for a shot of primer. Now I don't like to throw my primer on here until I feel like I've pretty well got it completely sanded because primer and the Bondo glazing don't, don't work well together. If you prime it and you put some more Bondo glazing on it, it cracks the primer, you don't wanna do that. So you wanna get it to this stage pretty well. We've got some trouble areas up here. I mean, if you look around, you can see some dark areas maybe on camera. I don't know if you can or not, but right in there, that's, that's a spot that hasn't been touched with sandpaper yet, so that's a low spot. I've got a whole very small pinhole right here, but I'm going to go back and potentially reglaze it uh, one more time, or at least in some areas, and definitely around this ring, because you can see where the print, so the print lines are this way, but when it printed, it, it kind of bubbled out and made some slight ridges here, and we want to get those completely out before we start uh, throwing primer on this. 
Um, these sanding sticks, you can get these on Amazon. These are fantastic. If you end up getting some in the, getting some of the Bondo glazing inside the, the uh, seam there in the ring, it's uh, really easy to get in there and clean that out real quick. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll go to the next step, which is going to be just fixing some trouble spots and hopefully get some primer on it yet today. I mean, I've only been working on this for probably just maybe an hour, maybe, maybe an hour and a half. I mean, I took a break in the middle and went and mowed the yard while this was curing. So this is not a long process and the more you do it, the faster you get. This completes the first part of what I had intended to accomplish on the dome. I am going to do a little bit more filling and a little bit more sanding, and then I'm going to have a part two that we'll, we'll link in the description that will cover some more uh, filler primer and some sanding to get it up to the smooth stage that we need it to get to, so stay tuned. <laughs>